Well, our reading this morning comes from uh, Paul's uh, second letter to the Corinthians. Actually, it's his third letter to the Corinthians, but uh, there, there were three letters originally, but we lost one. Uh, but instead of calling them two and three, we call them one and two. So this is Corinthians two. Just wanted to clear that up for you, you know. <laughs> from the fifth chapter, Paul writes, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, and see, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled himself, sorry, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, our, our theme for this, this fall, and maybe you uh, were able to figure it out from the reading, is reconciliation, or the repairing of relationships. It's an important biblical concept. I think it's an underemphasized biblical concept. I think it's absolutely essential to our faith. In today's reading, we hear the Apostle Paul urging us to be reconciled to God and to engage in our own ministry of reconciliation. But before I, I go on and talk about reconciliation, I just have to back up and talk about forgiveness just a little bit. I, I don't talk about forgiveness very much. I mostly let the TV preachers do that. But I had this little story I wanted to tell you uh, about, a, about a, a little boy this summer in Saskatoon who was down at, the, uh, down at River Landing, at that great water park that's down there, you know? Uh, and he went up to the concession booth uh, and he dug in his pocket and pulled out a loony and put it on the counter and said, I want to buy it. And the woman behind the counter said, you want to buy what? The whole thing, he said. <laughs> oh, she said, that's not enough money. Well, he said, I was afraid of that. So he dug in his pocket again and brought out another loony, <laughs> put it beside the first one. That's my final offer, he said. Take it or leave it. Well, the woman gathered up the two loonies and came around to the, and she said, gave him back his money and said, there's three things you have to understand about this water park. And the first is, you can't buy it. And the second is, it's not for sale. And the third is, it already belongs to you. And those three things are the things I, I believe we have to understand about God's forgiveness. We can't buy it, we can't earn it in any way. It's not for sale. And it's already ours. My understanding is that it is God's nature to be forgiving. And that forgiveness is freely given to one and to all. That is the good news. And thanks be to God for it. So, uh, in my life, if I've been hurt by something that somebody has said or done, well, then I, I have a choice. I can hang on to that hurt or I can let it go. Forgiveness is the act of letting go. Letting go. Now, the person who hurt me may never know that I've forgiven them eh, or even care. But it's something I have done. I have decided not to let that hurt control my life anymore. It's gone. Now, it sounds easy when you say it fast. And for small hurts that happened a long time ago, it can be easy. For big hurts and fresh wounds, it's not always as easy as it sounds. But until we can forgive, until we can let go, we will remain hurt and we will not be healed. We don't have to forgive, but we won't own our own lives until we do. Okay, forgiveness. Forgiveness, then, is a one-person event. But reconciliation is like the tango. 
It takes two to reconcile. You know, long, young lovers have a tiff, uh, and then, then they make up. They reconcile. They decide that that didn't matter all that much. They're going to let go of that, and they're going to get together, and they're going to heal their, their briefly broken relationship. Now, let me say right now off the top that in human relationships, reconciliation is not always possible. It's not even always desirable. You know, for the sake of the children, you and your ex may work out a, a working relationship. You may even decide to forgive each other for all that stuff that happened between you. But that doesn't mean you have to get remarried. Reconciliation is not always possible or even desirable. So a lack of recognition, a lack of reconciliation is not just one more thing to feel guilty about. No. But you know, if we put our hearts and minds to the task, it's amazing the kind of broken relationships that can be reconciled. This is the 20th anniversary of the genocide in Rwanda. Just a little primer on that for those of you who you know, weren't born then, maybe. 1994, it was the middle of a civil war, and the whole country just went insane. We don't have any exact statistics, but in round numbers, in a 100-day period, one million people were murdered. This is in a country of seven million people. Hutus against Tutsis, one ethnic group against another. In that 100 days, 10,000 people were murdered every day, most of them the old-fashioned way. They were hacked to death with machetes or beaten to death with clubs. Rape was systematically used as a weapon of war. A horrible, horrible thing. So 20 years ago, Rwanda was a mess. And still, the genocide hangs over every aspect of life in that country to this very day. And yet, in some ways, there has been astonishing progress. After the war, the government offered universal health insurance, and they trained tens of thousands of health care workers and sent them out into the countryside to make house calls. As a result of that initiative, in the past 10 years, life expectancy in Rwanda has doubled. Doubled. In that same 10 years, deaths from HIV AIDS from tuberculosis, from malaria, have all decreased by 80%. Rwanda ranked number one in the sub-Sahara for the use of mosquito nets. In that 10 years, maternal mortality, women dying in childbirth, has fallen by 60%. Since the year 2000, the population in that country has grown by 35%, uh, and that's largely with uh, people who have fled the country coming back in. The population has gotten bigger, but infant mortality has fallen by 63% in that same period. Astonishing progress in some ways. I don't want to present a picture of this you know, wonderful recovery because there are still many, many problems there. Uh, Rwanda is nominally a parliamentary democracy like Canada, and yet uh, at the present time, uh, the leader of every single opposition party is languishing in prison. Nine out of ten Rwandans are subsistence farmers. Um, the annual average uh, daily income is a dollar a day. Sixty percent live in poverty. I mean, there's still big problems. And yet, and yet progress is being made. Life is going on. And reconciliation is happening. Earlier this summer, Photographer Pieter Hugo and writer Susan Dominus reported to the New York Times about some stories of reconciliation in Rwanda. Maybe we can see the first, uh, the first of these pictures. His name is uh, Jean-Pierre Carenzi, and he says, My conscience was not quiet, and when I would see her, I was very ashamed. I went to her house and asked for forgiveness. Then I shook her hand. So far, we are on good terms. And I hear in that so far the tentativeness of this reconciliation. I mean, this is, this is real world stuff where it's not just like it sounds like on a piece of paper. 
So far, we are on good terms. And I see he has his back turned to her a little bit as he says that. Her name is Vivian Niramana, and she says, He killed my father and three brothers. He did these killings with other people, but he came alone to me and asked for pardon. I was afraid of him. Now I have granted him pardon. Things have become normal. And in my mind, I feel clear. And you see she has her hand on his shoulder. Next one, please. He is Godfrey Muraharanwa, and he says, I burned her house. I attacked her in order to kill her and her children, but God protected them and they escaped. When I was released from jail, if I saw her, I would run and hide. I decided to ask her for forgiveness to have good relationships with the person to whom you did evil deeds. We thank God. Her name is Avasta Mukanyandwi, and she says, I used to hate him. When he came to my house and, house and knelt down before me and asked for forgiveness, I was moved by his sincerity. Now, if I cry for help, he comes to rescue me. When I face any issue, I call him. Now, these people are using the language of, of forgiveness, but really what they're talking about is reconciliation, about repairing broken relationships. And that is the power of reconciliation, that when I face any issue, I call the man who tried to murder me and my children. And the last one? His name is Dominique. And Dahamana, and Dahimana, yeah, that's right. He says, The day I thought of asking pardon, I felt unburdened and relieved. I had lost my humanity because of the crime I committed. But now I feel like any human being. And her name is Consilda Muganyika. She says, after I was chased from my village and Dominique and others looted it, I became homeless and insane. Later, when he asked my pardon, I said, I have nothing to feed my children. Are you going to help me raise my children? Are you going to build a house for them? The next week, Dominique came with some survivors and former prisoners who perpetrated genocide. There were more than 50 of them, and they built my family a house. Ever since then, I have started to feel better. I was like a dry stick. Now I feel peaceful in my heart, and I share this peace with my neighbors. I want you to hear that again. They're holding hands there for Pete's sake. I was like a dry stick. Now I feel peaceful in my heart, and I share this peace with my neighbors. She is saying just exactly what Paul was saying to us to move from being a dry stick, hard and brittle on the inside, to move from that to feeling peaceful in her heart. This is the power of reconciliation. And to share this peace with her neighbors, this is the ministry of reconciliation. May such peace and such a ministry be mine, and may it be yours. Amen.